Technology is constantly getting better and better. We traveled to the moon, but we're now talking about going to Mars. Hundreds of years ago, it would take days to travel from Europe to America. Now it takes a few hours. In this video, we're going to take a step back and look at some of the amazing technology you might not be already aware of and just how far we've come. Here are 15 of the most satisfying machines that will amaze you. Dumping Machine We're first going to look at technology involving dump trucks. A normal dump truck can tilt up itself and dump all of its contents. But what about longer dump trucks? What about dump trucks that would require a huge amount of power to tilt it up? Well, these dumping trucks seem to have solved this problem. As we see in this video, the dump truck drives into a platform and this machine somehow lifts a fully loaded truck into a 45 degree angle. Two steel poles rise out of the ground and have enough force to lift the entire truck and its components onto a tilted angle. Then the trailer back opens and the force of gravity works its magic and unloads. At first, only the load from the bottom half of the trailer is coming out, but the machine lifts the truck even higher so it can empty out the load in its entirety. This is beneficial for trucks carrying large loads for a number of reasons. The main one is that the truck doesn't need to use its own force to lift its entire load, saving it tons of energy. You also save up on labor costs as the entire trailer has been emptied with little or no effort required. As we'll see in many other machines on this list, this saves a ton of time and effort. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Braiding Machine Next up, we'll be looking at Porsche's exclusive supercar, the 911 Turbo S Exclusive Series. Although this is an amazing machine in its own right, we'll be looking at the incredible machine used to make its wheels. This supercar will be the first ever car to have advanced carbon wheels, which will make driving smoother and more dynamic. These wheels will essentially make the car 20% lighter, which has a number of advantages because the car weighs less and needs less fuel. It's easier to stop, and most importantly for Porsche drivers, it can accelerate a lot faster. But behind this amazing new technology is an amazing manufacturing machine. When you think of a braiding machine, you might think of sewing or fabrics. But this braiding machine is actually used for creating this wheel and looks like a giant Ferris wheel. It works in the same way as the carbon fibers are woven into the wheels by using this machine. This giant machine can produce up to 18 kilometers of carbon fiber compound, which is the main component of these wheels. This is the world's largest radial braiding machine with a diameter of approximately 9 meters. Like anything to do with Porsche, these wheels aren't cheap. A set of these carbon wheels cost $18,000, which is roughly the same price as an economy car. So the money spent on saving fuel might be a teeny bit irrelevant. So don't expect these to appeal to regular car consumers anytime soon. <laughs> the Orange Shaker Our next machine is a bit more modest but it's an amazing problem solver. One of the most difficult aspects of collecting oranges is getting them down from the tree. If you get a ladder and pick them up bit by bit, this could take a lot of time, especially in the incredibly warm weather where these are grown. In this video, we see an orange tree in Valencia, Spain. This orange shaking machine simply grabs the bark of the tree and gently shakes it until all of the oranges fall. Of course, a lot of leaves fall too, but this saves up an incredible amount of time. This is completely different to how oranges are usually collected. Typically, you need a ladder and a big bag and take them down bit by bit. Sometimes farmers will use clippers and cut off the branches to save time. But generally, this is a very tough and back-breaking task. However, the oranges grown in the city of Valencia taste quite bitter and are usually not used for human consumption. So the shaking of the tree is a more cleanup action than any fruit picking. These oranges are used as compost. The machine is particularly useful for the city of Valencia. Workers who clean and maintain the city now have a lot less work on their hands because of these tree shaking machines. So if you're lucky enough to be walking around the sunny streets of Valencia, have a lookout for these. <laughs> Bail wrappers. And if you thought the tree shaker made lives much easier, Wait till you check out the bale wrapper. As you may know, farmers gather up bales of hay by using a hail baler. Hay can be used to feed farm animals. 
This way, the animals don't graze too much of the grass from the land and won't be hungry in the winter when there's less growth on the farm. Have you ever passed by a farm and seen large bales of hay wrapped in plastic? This keeps the hay fresh and protects it from being eaten by any other animals. This usually involves a lot of hard work and it could take hours to wrap these massive bales in plastic, but this slowly is becoming a thing of the past with this innovative new baler. According to Penn State Extension, there are four advantages of wrapping hay bales in plastic. These are reduction in drying time, better leaf retention compared to dry hay, no storage structures needed, and reduction in weather risk. The disadvantages are the cost of wrapping these bales and disposing of the plastic. In the olden days, this would be done manually, but as you can see in this machine, Hay bales can be wrapped automatically. This is an amazing machine in that it allows the farmer to do even more work with less effort. Mm -hmm. Chain makers. We often just take for granted how chains are made, but the way in which these everyday items are made is extremely complex and pretty darn cool. As you know, chains are used to secure and lock various items, so they're designed to make them almost unbreakable and should be able to withstand huge amounts of force. The chain starts with individual bits of metal coil, which are one by one fed into a machine. The machine needs to bend forcefully and shape the metal. Electrical tools move in from all sides. A tool called a jaw moves it forward. The other jaw bends it around a steel pin. It's then bent into a C-shape and then another jaw bends this C into the closed shape we associate with chains. Once this ring is attached to the chain, it's time to make another one. But as these metal pieces are used to lock and secure items, extra measures are made to ensure they don't break. As such, the rings are often heated while being made too. In this video, we can see how one link of the chain is red from the heat while another has turned yellow. The heating process improves the overall strength and resistance of the metal and often makes it less prone to rust. So this extra measure really adds to the overall strength and durability of the chain. <laughs> Taffy pulling machine. We now move on to this amazing taffy pulling machine, a classic American candy. If you're watching this from outside the US and has never had taffy, toffee and Turkish delight are quite similar. Taffy is made from boiled molasses or brown sugar and is a delicious soft candy. You're basically eating sugar, so it's not exactly the healthiest, but it sure looks delicious. Here we have huge lumps of taffy thrown onto a turntable type machine. This machine typically requires two people, one person to pull and stretch the taffy and another to cut it off. The taffy is mixed together around and around and eventually you see it gradually changing color. The Old Mill Candy Kitchen is a place where you can see this work in action. You can sit at a window while you watch taffy guru Kip Lane work his magic. When a kid takes a bite and breaks into a great big smile, I know I'm doing my job right, Lane says. Taffy is believed to have originated in New Jersey in the 1870s, but there's also evidence of this stuff in the Middle East more than a thousand years ago. Looks absolutely delicious and makes me want to eat mountains of it. Don't tell my dentist. <coughs> avocado peeler. From delicious taffy to juicy avocados, next up we have a hipster's dream come true, the avocado peeler. With these machines, you simply pop some avocados in and this machine will automatically peel all the skin off and even remove the seeds. So now the avocados are converted into the paste you would typically find on avocado toast or the paste used to make guacamole. If you were making guacamole manually, you would need to individually peel off all the avocados and then mash them by hand. This machine is incredibly efficient. It can peel up to 280 avocados per minute. The machine is made from stainless steel, which makes it easy to clean. While these seem to be a very trendy fruit today, they've been around and enjoyed for quite a long time. The avocado became very popular in the 16th century when Spanish conquistadors conquered Mexico. And as they colonized Central and South America, they began growing avocados further down Latin America. Another interesting fact is that they weren't always called avocados. An Irish explorer named Sir Hans Sloan, who's credited for inventing chocolate milk, called the avocado tree the alligator pear tree, but his name seems to have not caught on. Sadly though, these delicious fruits are not great for the environment, as a lot of forests are destroyed for their production. So go easy on the avocados. <laughs> 
tree processor. When you think of making trees and timber, you're probably picturing a lumberjack with an axe shouting timber as the wood falls. To convert a tree into a log of wood, you need to chop down the tree. Then once the tree has fallen, you need to again cut off all of its branches and it looks like a lot of hard work, right? But the tree processors make the tree loggers life easy. Here we can see it lift the tree trunk into a vise. Then the tree slides through the device and its branches are removed. What's incredibly amazing is that the machine has two claw-like grips that hold the tree still and moves it up and down accordingly. Once the branchless trunk gets to a certain length, it gets cut off. By the end, this simple machine had made some equally sized logs from the tree. And this is all done by someone simply operating the controls and hasn't had to lift a finger. <laughs> pad printing. If you don't know what pad printing is, you've certainly come across it on your laptop. There are keys, but who painted those letters, numbers, and symbols on those keys? The answer is pad printing. Pad printing is sometimes called tomography or tampo printing, where a silicone pad is used to transfer ink onto the surface of something in a very specific shape. Remember using a rubber stamp on something? It's basically this in machine form. But rubber stamping a flat envelope is easy. What happens when you want to have something printed onto a golf ball or design on a jewelry ring? These machines are made to print incredibly complex designs on all types of objects. You can be printing on all types of tiny, curvy, and wonky surfaces such as shoes, golf balls, electric cables, the list goes on. Signing machine. Pad printing is amazing, but what about a machine that could replicate handwriting? Well, believe it or not, there's even technology around which can replicate human handwriting and create your signature for you. Watchmaker Jacquet Droz designed this signature machine where a series of gears and springs automatically generate signatures. You stick a pencil in its retractable claw and just let it go. It replicates the owner's signature and can't be used to forge other people's signatures. So you can't just use the machine to sell autographs for celebrities on eBay. You might also be thinking, what if someone steals the machine? What if someone gets hold of this machine and starts signing checks with my name? Well, it requires a four-digit pin inside, so even if someone does get a hold of it, they still can't sign something on your behalf. However, these signature machines are a teeny tiny bit expensive. They cost 367,500 US dollars. So I think I might just write my own signature the old-fashioned way for now. <laughs> Saucepan rings. A big part of this video is to look at the everyday objects you use every day but never really think about. Have you ever looked at the rings at the bottom of your saucepan and thought, I wonder how they got there? Well, the techniques behind them might surprise you. In this video, we see a maroon-shaped saucepan. It's thrown into the machine and starts spinning around at a high speed. Then a blade is pressed up against it and because it's spinning around, it cuts concentric circles across the surface. Eventually, the saucepan changes color from maroon to stainless silver steel. These concentric rings don't just look amazing, they also serve a purpose. They stop the pan from sliding. They also increase the surface area at the bottom of the pan, which brings heat to the pan more efficiently. Marble Music Our next machine is less practical and is an example of technology that can be a lot of fun too. The marble machine is one of the strangest musical instruments ever made. The Swedish band Wintergaden have developed something which involves a machine dropping marbles to play drums, a bass, and several other instruments. Approximately 2,000 marbles are used in this machine and can basically create music through levers and pulleys. The inspiration for the marble machine comes from the Spielkoch Museum in the Netherlands, which specializes in self-playing musical instruments. The machine was made in 16 months and the band was invited to the Spielkoch Museum to showcase their machine. Only problem was the machine was bigger than the doorway of the room it was in, so it needed to be taken apart and then put back together again. So, what does the music sound like? At first, you can hear the sound of marbles falling, which doesn't sound too impressive musically, but then, as even more marbles move and more levers are pulled, a beautiful xylophone sound kicks in. There are other levers marked for drums and cymbals, which are then added to the song. Then the bass is heard in the song. What was essentially the sound of marbles has now transformed into an incredibly catchy tune. The song slows down halfway through and all you can hear is the marbles, but the machine switches up again. The song is called Marble Machine, so give it a listen after this video. <laughs> car Shredder. If you're saying goodbye to one of your cars, 
you'll probably try to sell it as a used car, but at some stage you need to admit that there's no life left in that old girl and bring it back to the scrapyard. Every scrapyard will have a machine that crushes the car and uses its parts for scrap metal, but the one they use in Newport, Wales is definitely one of a kind. This is the world's largest industrial shredder and has been used in this scrapyard since 2006. According to scrapcomparison.co.uk, it works like any other shredder, but at a colossal scale. For every hour, 450 cars are converted into 350 tons of metal by this shredder. It's connected directly to the Welsh National Power Grid to get sufficient power as it uses up quite a lot of power. Apparently, heavy-duty hammers spin rapidly on the car and crush it down. Then the machine automatically separates the steel from other materials in the cars such as glass, rubber, and plastic. So what do they do with this scrap metal? Apparently, 60% is shipped to Southeast Asia, where there's a big demand. Reusing scrap metal is great for the environment as well. 3D House Printer One of the most jaw-dropping technologies around is the 3D printer. As you know, a printer prints pieces of paper, but these flat pieces of paper are only two dimensions. This printer can print out things that are three dimensions, and the possibilities are endless. It's been suggested that in the future these things will print jewelry, car parts, and even human organs. But in Austin, Texas, here we have one of the first ever homes made from 3D printing materials. It was constructed in eight days, whereas under normal circumstances, it usually takes around 26 weeks to build a house. The walls of the house were all printed. The homes are made of concrete walls, insulation to keep the heat in, and steel for reinforcement. As architect Melody Yashar explained to designboom.com, basically we have a large-scale, gantry-based 3D printer that deposits a proprietary material that we've developed known as lava creep. Layer by layer, we use that system to 3D print the building. So why would you build a house using a 3D printer? The two main advantages of this way is that it's cheaper and faster to build. For a lot of people in Austin, Texas, housing is simply too expensive. You can make houses for much lower cost with this technology. You can also make them a lot faster, and when you increase the supply of houses, property prices go down too. This technology could be a real game changer. Diamant Plow Lastly, we'll be looking at the amazing Diamant Plow. This amazing plow is built for all land and soil conditions and can slowly rotate as the ground moves sturdier. The plow is definitely something we take for granted, but life as we know it today would be completely different without this invention. Thousands of years ago, humans would need to hunt and gather for food. With a plow, food was suddenly less scarce. Farming involved multiple people working on the same land. Communities then grew from this, and then civilization itself. As you probably already know, plowing is when the soil on a field is tuned up before being sown with seeds. This was used by carrying a plow in a field, using a horse, and then by using a tractor. But even the plow and the tractor method is constantly being tweaked and changed to make it even better. There are some other interesting features. The plow is not rigid and is flexible enough to twist and turn up to 90 degree angles. Often the tractor line shifts towards the center of the tractor's rear axle and reduces pressure at the headlands. This reduces fuel consumption by 10% and boosts the pulling force. A tractor's force is sometimes not enough to carry a plow, which is why this plow sometimes powers itself and even takes the burden off the tractor. Again, it's yet another machine that makes life a lot easier. And that's all we have time to look at for today. Let us know in the comments if there are any other machines that have impressed you, or if you have any suggestions for future videos. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please do, as we've got plenty more exciting videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>